All right, welcome back. Lesson 20, Wednesday, Reader's Notebook. Let's look at the lesson plans over here. Wednesday, April 22nd, Reader's Notebook. We're going to be doing pages 71 through 75. Let's take a peek here. Oh, this is what went a little ahead. All right, page 71. We have our spelling words here, and we're going to put them together over here. Okay, so they're together. They're broken apart. Then you draw the line. It says draw a line from the word on the left to a word on the right to make each spelling word. Here we go. Let's read our list. Bedtime, sunset, echo, bathtub, sailboat, my turn, your turn, flagpole, backpack, playpen, raincoat, inside, himself. Draw the line to connect it, pretty easy. Pause the screen to check it against mine, and you can see bath, tub, bathtub. I labeled it number one. Flag pole, flag pole. I labeled it number two. Pause the screen for an answer key and moving on. All right, back to those prepositional phrases. It just is a group of words that means where or when, okay? The friends play after lunch. When? After lunch. Where? It does not say. They meet at Viv's home. Where? At Viv's home. It's talking about where. It does not say when. Viv swings under a tree. Where? Under a tree. When? I don't know. doesn't say. Lynn skips on the grass. Where? On the grass. When? It does not say. Mom comes home at 5 o'clock. When? It, when? At 5 o'clock. Where? Does she come through? I know she comes home, but does she come through the door, front door? Does she come through the garage? I don't know. It just talks about when she comes home at 5 o'clock. Lynn goes home before then. When? Before then. Before something. That's not a very good sentence. Lynn comes home before then, before something else happens, I guess. Okay? So, the friends play after lunch. When? They meet at Viv's home. That's where. Viv swings under a tree. That's where. Lynn skips on the grass. That's where. Mom comes home at 5 o'clock. That's when. Lynn goes home before then. That's when. All right. Pause the screen for an answer key if you need to. And moving along. All right, spelling compound words. Write the correct word to complete each sentence. The sunset was very red. The himself was very red. You know which one makes sense, sunset. Let us play inside today or flagpole today. Let us play flagpole today. I don't know what kind of game's called flagpole. Let us play inside today. I carry my... Playpen with me. Oh, how embarrassing would that be if you carried it? It's like a baby crib. It's like a baby play yard. I carry my backpack with me. That makes sense. You don't carry a baby, baby crib. Before bedtime, before bedtime, I brush my teeth. Or before sailboat, I brush my teeth. Hello. That's silly. My raincoat has a matching hat. Or my bathtub has a matching hat. All the way through. The sunset was very red. Let us play inside today. I carry my backpack with me. Before bedtime, I brush my teeth. My raincoat has a matching hat. And at room 10, sometimes we also like to put a little X on there. You can do that too. And go ahead and pause. Give it a screenshot. Screenshot means you're pausing it so you can use it as an answer key. All right, moving along. Spiral review, that means practicing things that are old so they don't fall out of our brain. Write each sentence with the correct verb. Remember, a verb is a doing word. Walking, jumping, videotaping, standing, talking, those are doing words. This puppet is small or this puppet are small? Is. This puppet is small. Raindrops is wet or raindrops are wet? Raindrops are, raindrops are wet. The lambs is white? No. The lambs are white. The lambs are white. The show was funny. The show was funny. Or the show were funny. The show was funny. And we're going to talk about why in just a minute. Those muffins was huge. Those muffins were huge. Okay. One puppet, we say is. One thing, we say is. More than one, two or more, we say are. It's just one, so we say is. Raindrops, it's two or more, so we say are. The lambs, two or more, so we say are. 
the show. It's just one, so we say was. Those muffins, more than one, were. So I know it's is and are, but then here it's was and were, okay? That's for just one. That's for more than one, two or more. That's for just one. This is for two or more. This is just for one, but this is for two or more. This is past tense, so is and was. Today it is, yesterday it was, okay? Today they are, yesterday they were, okay? So one show was. Were is for more than one, two or more. Those muffins, more than one, two, two or more. Those muffins were huge. The muffin was, that would be one, but we don't have just one. We have two, okay? So it's matching. It's called subject verb agreement. It's matching the subject, the noun, the person, place, or thing. We're matching the noun with the verb, okay? One, and it gets is. More than one, are. More than one, are. One, was. More than one, were, okay? If I had it my way, we would do the whole page of is and are, is and are, and do a different page of was and were. I guess I think that's moving along a little too quick. They're thinking you remember all that from a long time ago. All right, grammar and writing. A prepositional phrase can tell when or where. Example, we walk after lunch. That tells when. We walk in the park. That tells where. Add a prepositional phrase to each sentence to tell when or where. Write the new sentence on the line. My friends and I ran. Where? My friends and I ran to the fence. And that's what I added. Something fell. Something fell. Oops, something fell where? On the floor. Something fell, oops, something fell on the floor. Mrs. White can't tap today. Did you forget how to tap on the words? Come on, Mrs. White, get it together. I tripped, where? I tripped on a log. I went home. I went home when? At six o'clock. All the way through, here we go. My friends and I ran to the fence. Something fell. Oh my goodness, I keep messing up on that one, huh? Uh-huh. Something fell on the floor. I tripped on a log. I went home at six o'clock. And last page for, oh, excuse me. All right, so you're done with this. this is lesson 20, okay? Listen to, it says, watch Amazing Whales, the book read aloud on Think Central, okay? It's gonna be on your things to do list. And you'll see it on there. It's called Amazing Whales. It's a really cool story about Amazing Whales. It's an I can read book. So it's good for first and second graders. And then we're going to answer the questions here. So I hope you already did listen to um, the story Amazing Whales. If you didn't do that yet, then you're going to stop. You're going to go and listen to that story. Read that story maybe two or three times. Then come back and we'll do this together. Okay, so I'm going to pause. Okay, you're only doing this with me right now if you already read the story, okay? Here we go. Amazing whales. What I know about whales. Draw your favorite whale. Label your picture. Tell one fact that makes this whale amazing. And there's my whale picture. Kind of whale. A blue whale. That's what I chose. Amazing fact. Something really cool that's true. It's as long as a basketball court. That's true. It's as long as a basketball court court and has some really cool facts about its tongue and um, how much it weighs and there's many many other whales you can study in the book too this is the one that I chose all right let's move over here at the end of the story whales are in trouble write three things people can do to help them number one people can help keep the ocean clean if the ocean is dirty it hurts the whales number two people can stop hunting whales hunting them and they um, they get them with spears, like swords, you know, um, and they kill them and they sell um, whale blubber for money. Okay, it's very sad. People can keep studying whales and how they live. The scientists that are studying whales help learn about whales and then they learn how to protect them. All right, one more time all the way through. People can help keep the ocean clean. People can stop hunting whales. People can keep studying whales and how they live. And go ahead and screenshot this, pause it so you can copy for an answer key. All right.
Good job. We'll see you back here for phonics, or excuse me, for reader's book, reader's notebook next time. We always do it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Bye-bye.